So there is the problem. What usually gets presented to you is have a look at the whole thing, it starts like this. And when you look at the picture A, what it appears to be is a one big triangle that is cut into pieces. You can look at the dimensions of the triangle. It has a height of 5 and the width of the base is equal to 13. So this is 5 and the width of the base is equal to 13. So what we have is this 5 by 13 triangle. In the animation, blue and red pieces have swapped and yellow and green pieces have been rearranged. And all of a sudden you have the same 5 by 13 triangle, but now there is a hole, this missing piece right here. The area of a triangle A is going to be A is equal to 5 times 13 divided by half. That is equal to 32 units and one half of a unit. And when you look at a triangle B, it is going to be area of a triangle B. It is 5 times 13 divided by 2 and minus 1 unit here. This is equal to 32 and a half units minus one unit, which is equal to 31 and a half units. Because there is this part which is not colored. The question then is, how is it that just by rearranging, we have made a square disappear? Slant is the nature of this problem. If you could summarize what's the problem with this, because it's not really a paradox. This is a bit of a cheat, really. It's an optical illusion. And the reason why is that slant is the issue. Remember that I have said it appears to be a triangle. It only looks like one, but in fact it is not a triangle at all. It is actually a quadrilateral. Because the gradient of a red triangle is in fact different from a gradient of a blue triangle. There is a couple of ways you can talk about this. If you know trigonometry, it might be easiest to talk in those terms. But you can also see it without trigonometry. Let's have a look at a blue triangle. You can see that its dimensions are 2 by 5. So we have the height of this blue triangle equal to 2 and its width is equal to 5. If you have a look now at a red triangle, its dimensions are 3 by 8. The height of a red triangle is 3 and the width of the red triangle is equal to 5. Now we can name this angle of a blue triangle to be alpha this angle right here. We can also name this angle of a red triangle to be beta. Well, that means that tan of alpha is equal to 2 divided by 5 as an opposite side divided by the adjacent. This ratio is also called a gradient of a triangle. Now, a little bit of a reminder here. Gradient of a triangle is defined as height divided by width. Basically, gradient of a triangle is divided as height of that triangle divided by its width. We can also see that tan of the angle beta is equal to 3 divided by 8. As two halves is different than 3 eighths, that means that tan of alpha is different than tan of beta. Well, that also means that alpha and beta are not the same angle. An approach from the elementary geometry perspective would be as follows. So the dimensions of the blue triangle are 2 by 5, and the dimensions of the red triangle are 3 by 8. Both of these triangles have a right angle. This is the right angle. We see that 2 by 5 is a different ratio from 3 by 8. So these two triangles are not similar. The red triangle is not similar to the blue triangle.
They only look similar, but they are not actually similar. Let's take a look at the blue triangle and the alpha angle. By using trigonometry, we can determine the size of the angle alpha. We know that tan of alpha is equal to 2 divided by 5. Well, that means that alpha is equal to arcus tan of 2 divided by 5, which is going to give us that alpha is an angle approximate to 22 degrees. Now let's take a look at the red triangle and its angle beta. We see that tan of beta is equal to 3 divided by 8. That means that beta is equal to arcus tan of 3 divided by 8, and that means that beta is approximately 21 degrees. We can't tell the difference between the 21 degree and 22 degree angles using our eyes only. And when you take a look at that line, it does look pretty straight. There is only one degree difference, so no wonder you can't tell. Now, if I make this difference really obvious, let's observe something like this. You have one triangle here and another one there. And you have these bits and pieces in here. This is an exaggerated view. It's obvious now that it doesn't work, because this shape is not a triangle. You see this gap in here. That gap is where this gap comes from. So it's not very big, but over a large distance from here to here, it's just big enough to make a noticeable difference in this square. Now, if you think about it, if they swap places, instead of being like this shape, you're going to get this one. So we have a triangle right here, and we are going to have this triangle right here. We have this rectangle and the different bits and pieces inside. So this shape is what is going to give us a triangle which looks like this. So you can see the, how this one bends inwards and this one bends outwards. And there is where the imaginary triangle lives. So from bending inwards to bending outwards, there is some missing area in here. So that's where the paradox, or more precisely for this case, that is where the optical illusion comes from. If you liked this video, then I suggest you go and watch this one next. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel, and I'm looking forward to reading your comments.